Well, I think the biggest challenge to the energy system right now is the need to develop low carbon technologies that are economic in the marketplace. So the next president will really need to focus on um, creating an incentive structure that allows uh, both the private sector and government funded research uh, to flourish in terms of the development and deployment of low carbon energy technologies. Natural gas from shale has been uneconomic to produce for many years, and the reason why is that it's trapped in sedimentary rock, so it's quite difficult to extract, but recent uh, technology which permits horizontal drilling uh, has allowed um, previously uneconomic resources to be exploited, and this has helped to increase the production of natural gas in the United States for the first time uh, in, in this century. Uh, it's still not clear that the reserves that we have in terms of shale oil can be economically fully exploited, and that really depends on the level of the natural gas price. Gas prices are still relatively high, so the um, it's economic to produce the shale gas, but if gas prices were to fall back down, uh, it would be more difficult to economically recover it. Depending on how you define the energy crisis, um, offshore oil drilling and drilling in Anwar uh, may help to increase world supply of oil. Um, the, the, the offshore drilling and drilling in Anwar is not an immediate fix. Any kind of drilling will take uh, quite a long time. Uh, the exploration needs to be done, wells need to be uh, drilled, offshore oil platforms need to be built, so it's a, a longer term solution. And in any event, it's not uh, guaranteed that increased offshore oil production will help reduce gas prices at the pump. Uh, whatever is produced will be sold on the world oil market and whatever the prevailing world oil price is will be the uh, level at which gas prices remain. So if it helps to add a lot to world supplies of oil, then prices should come down. Uh, but if the effect is pretty marginal, prices may not fall too much. I think, in my opinion, there's two dimensions to the energy crisis. One is the vulnerability and insecurity with large U.S. dependence on foreign oil and gas supplies. And the second and more difficult challenge is the global climate change challenge. Uh, in both cases, uh, a high degree of international cooperation is required to make significant progress. Um, to reduce or relieve the crisis. Um, taking the energy security question, if um, large consuming countries uh, have a mechanism to cooperate with each other to release stockpiles of oil in the event of a crisis um, or to build stockpiles in times of, not a, of, of no crisis, uh, that uh, kind of cooperation really reduces the power that the oil suppliers have over consuming countries. And to take the climate change example, it's a global problem and uh, the biggest emitters are the United States and China and if those two countries don't cooperate, it's not going to be possible uh, to address the climate change challenge. Climate change is driven by burning of fossil fuels, and that's the main connection with energy. Um, some fossil fuels are more carbon intensive and therefore more potent in terms of their global warming potential. Uh, coal is the most carbon intensive of all the fossil fuels, and so to the extent we burn more 
coal, and we might want to do that from an energy security point of view, uh, we make the climate change problem worse. And to the extent we're able to uh, improve overall energy efficiency, use cleaner fuels, lower carbon fuels, uh, and move, of course, to renewables or even nuclear energy, which is carbon free, uh, we're able to make great progress in terms of reducing global greenhouse gas emissions.